Hello and welcome to the Enneagram video series. Today I'm talking with some type fours. I cannot wait to interview them here in a couple moments, but before we get started, I want to give you a little introduction as to what it means to be a type four. So type fours are called the individualist or the romantic. They value truth and they're honest with themselves on things that they're great at and the things that they're not so good at. They believe that they are missing something somewhere within themselves and so they want to project an image of uniqueness so that others don't pick up on that worry that they have. They are in the heart and feelings triad and so they value authenticity and they're focused on the authenticity of their experience and they don't feel like they need to fix their emotions. They are just fine sitting in them, which is unique in the Enneagram as every other type feels like they need to fix situations that they are presented with. They are emotionally honest, creative, and they see the beauty in the world. When in stress, they move towards the unhealthy aspects of the type two. They begin to ignore their own feelings. They can become dependent, over-involved, and need a lot of affirmation. When they're in growth, they move towards the positive aspects of the type one. They become more objective. They're able to finish projects that they start, and they know that their feelings don't have to be acted upon. So hello to my type fours. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so let's get started. I would love to hear what's your favorite part about being a type four. Um, I genuinely love like the creative aspect, like in high school, I was very involved in like the artistic side. Like I, I did a stained glass class, which is kind of a unique <laughs> thing. Yeah, I would agree. I like the creative side. Now that I work in healthcare and medicine, I, um, I tend to use art in medicine more often, um, which I think really benefits patients. So, I think it's good that we as four tend to have a high emotional intelligence. And I think it's great that if you look up type fours, um, we share that title with so many really cool artists and creators. On the other side, of course, what are some roadblocks that you find with being a type four? I feel like we just get so caught up in our emotions that we can lose sight of what's happening outside of our own heads. Mm -hmm. uh, I also personally like have found that I harbor a lot of negativity from the past that's harder to let go of. Even if I rationally know like this is, this is long gone, I still feel it, which is super bizarre. I agree with that. That happens to me a lot. Like there's a lot that I've felt that I didn't really need to feel anymore. Like I felt all this like sadness over stuff that wasn't really needed. So I would love to hear probably for our sisters who are out there that are trying to decide if they actually are a type four, what part of the type description really convinced you that you actually are a four? Three words, offbeat yet endearing. <laughs> I read that. I was like, I could slap that on my LinkedIn, my Instagram bio. This is me to a T. This is it. Um, I agree with that. Like in my Instagram bio for the longest time, it was like professional, awkward person. Let me know if you need one. Because like, <laughs> I always kind of like did my own thing and danced to my own drum in the best ways. Like when I asked my mom what I was like when I was younger, she goes, you really did your own thing. Like you did not care what people thought. I think what really stood out to me and sold me and truly put me in tears when I read it was just the fact that fours feel like they are inherently different from other people. But since I've been able to learn about the type four Enneagram, I have understood that that feeling different is not a disadvantage, it's just a feeling and that I can kind of move above it. So you all are a part of the heart or feeling triad. So how do you believe feeling impacts your life? Yeah, I am. Um, I feel like I, I have big emotions and that can sometimes get me in trouble. Um, it's a, it's definitely a blessing. And I've been told that it's a good thing. And it means that I have a good heart. I, as a teacher, was kind of known as the teacher that rocked the boat a little bit. And I think just because I fought so hard for my students and advocated for them, um, but I, I wouldn't change it. For me, the heart and feeling triad um, has made me really passionate about um, justice and social justice and making a difference in however I can. 
So my, my thought process to how do we get to a, a more just um, situation, whatever that may be, I arrived to first through feelings and subsequently through facts. Uh, I, I suppose they're, they're intertwined because we can't ignore facts, but um, the, the feelings will have just as much weight to me. So I try to look at things from a million different perspectives so I can figure out you know, the best possible outcome and best possible way to use my voice to achieve that outcome. Marisa, you are a four wing five, which I think is an interesting combination um, because fives are very logical and they don't really see the world through an emotional lens, whereas fours do. So how do you feel that those interact with each other? I guess my dad has always taught me since I was very little to separate the emotion from the situation. Don't lose the emotion and how you feel about it, but emotion won't get you there. Okay, great. So for Marley, you are a four wing three and fours value authenticity and they focus on their own experience, but threes kind of are focused on their outward appearance. So I'd love to hear how you think they affect each other. I think it all comes down to the primal need to be perceived as unique while wanting to be accepted, um, which are two things very hard to do in tandem and, and sound really gauche to say out loud. Um, so for me, being true to myself is my primary objective at all times. Um, but I often try displaying that in a way that's easier for people to swallow uh, because I also want to be understood. Yeah. Do you all find that you do that with your emotions? You kind of tone them down so that way it's easier for others to swallow? Yes. I would love to hear how you believe being a type four has impacted the career that you are in or that you're going to be doing. So I'm a copywriter uh, and good copywriting has a lot to do with nuance. So moving two little words around in a phrase or in a sentence of copy can really alter the meaning. Um, and that feels very intrinsic and powerful, even if I'm writing about something that is truly, truly mundane, uh, which I do very frequently in my job. But it's really cool that I can take just the minutia of the English language and transform it into something powerful. Um, I think it is just the most for thing I could be doing with my time. <laughs> my school district wasn't the best with like working with kids with 504 plans and thing or IEPs so for me it was really hard so like that was part of why I wanted to go into therapy and work with kids like and from that was part of it and then also I love love working with kids as well. I feel like in women's health I get to I get to use the best of both worlds from the logical side of my wing five to my four at heart a lot of emotion you really have to be able to connect and empathize um, with people yeah. and talk about not feeling like you have to fix other people's emotions right like in that situation you can't fix what they're going through but you can sit with them you can right. be with them which fours are amazing at. and it's very fulfilling so yeah definitely. in that way yeah. So for those of you that might not know, there's an artist called Sleeping at Last that created a song for each of the Enneagram types. They are very emotional, great to listen to. And I went ahead and pulled a stanza from the four song. So I'm going to read it to you right now. And then I just love to hear how it makes you feel, if you agree, if you disagree, all your thoughts and all your feelings. I'm ready for them. So it says, I'm stuck swimming in shadows down here. It's been forever since I came up for air. Flashlight in hand, determined to find authenticity only poetry could even begin to try to describe. I definitely say that kind of hits like with the emotion things because like there's times where you're just like really overwhelmed with your emotions and you don't know really what to do and like that can be like a couple days or like weeks on end. I really feel like this is, um, this is relatable for me. Um, I have struggled um, with depression. I don't know that I like the word struggled, but I have had depression for quite a long time. And 
I think since I've learned about my Enneagram type, I almost feel a little like a weight has been lifted just because I have a better understanding of how my personality has worked against me and ways that I can overcome it. And if I can't do it on my own, I know that I can reach out and I have pathways. Type fours embrace melancholy uh, and express melancholy a lot. Um, and I know I personally see um, just as much beauty in instances of melancholy as I do pain. Um, but I don't necessarily see it as depressing, which I think is hard for other people to grasp. But like when I say that, I know like my gut feeling is somebody's going to hear her say this and be like, oh my gosh, she's so depressing. Um, but I think it's just a, an appreciation for things that other people don't like to linger on, which I think is a strength. Yeah. And how does it feel for you as type fours when people try to get you to get over your emotions? Uh, it just, I'm really dismissive of that. Like how does one just get over things without thoroughly feeling them and experiencing or processing them? Like, I know that people can, it's possible, but like, I'm not one of those people. Like if somebody told me to just get over something, they probably don't know me very well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear what an area of growth is that the Enneagram has helped you acknowledge. Just kind of learning, like, because yes, I, I kind of always knew it was kind of different, but like realizing like it can be a positive thing and like it can shine a light in a beneficial way for you rather than it being this thing that's terrible and like just causes all these issues. You know, the missing piece or the wire differently really isn't all that different or missing and it's just who we are and it's who I am and and at the end of the day it's okay just because others don't see the world with an emotional lens primarily um, doesn't mean they're thoughtless or shallow you know, being in, in this sort of heart triad makes me feel things more deeply, but that doesn't make me any morally better than anybody else who has a different process. And I think that's something I've had to reckon with a lot. Definitely. Okay. Well, ladies, that brings us to our very last question. I would love to hear what's something that you wish people understood about being a type four and how can people use that to be a better friend to you? I think like that our emotions are genuine and like they're coming from a place and they're not just like these random bursts of energy and emotion. They're like coming from a genuine place in your heart. Like you're not just doing these just to be annoying or whatever. Or dramatic. That yeah. For sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just listen, just to listen. Sometimes it's just me. I don't want to say venting, but just being passionate yeah. about something over the phone, you know, just for, and I mean, my parents do this for me all the time or my husband, they just listen, you know, interject a couple of times, but just the fact that they allowed me that space and didn't, didn't rush me. I think that's really important. Authenticity and integrity are very important to me. I also read into everything as a type four. So if you're telling me something that actually does not have a deeper meeting, I'm going to need you to tell me that immediately. Otherwise I'm going to sit down for the rest of time determining what that is going to be. And I will bother you. Okay, ladies, this has been so excellent to learn more about being a type four. Thank you for your time. Um, and definitely, I'm grateful to be sisters with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out this video in the Sigma Kappa Enneagram video series. If you want to learn more about the other types or about the Enneagram in general, make sure to check out the other videos. Bye.